Our next contestant is on the FAM lab stage coming up, astrophysicist Brendan Mullen. I'll be back. <laughs> Brendan wants to know, where are the aliens? Where's Brendan? I'm right here. I want to know, Brendan, where are the aliens? <laughs> I haven't sold it yet, in case you're wondering. Which is weird, because, you know, this is prime real estate here. We're on a planet rich in liquid water and breathable air at just the right distance from the sun. We've got an asteroid belt right in our backyard full of plenty of raw materials for building spaceships or silver jumpsuits or whatever aliens do. It just it doesn't make sense, you know? Like, I should be swarmed with potential buyers now. Because you know it's not that hard to travel between the stars. Seriously, I mean, we could do it if we really wanted to. In just a few generations' time, ambition, and innovation, we could propel astronauts out of the solar system at a tenth of the speed of light. And if that were you, now you would be halfway to the moon by the time I finish this sentence. It's fast. In decades, a century of travel, the nearest stars and the planets that orbit around them would be yours or your descendants, more likely. After settling down for a while, they could send out their own pioneers and reach more distant stars. And over time, waves of our interstellar voyagers would cascade across the fertile worlds of the cosmos. And if we can do that, so could someone else, right? Well, starting from just about anywhere you can see in the night sky, another civilization could leapfrog star to star just like this and wind up on our doorstep after 100 million years, tops. I know what you're thinking. Oh, Brendan, you're far too handsome to wait around that long. <laughs> you flatterers. No, I'm, I'm, I wasn't going to plan to wait around that long. Now, they, they've had plenty of time to show up already. Why our Earth has been around long enough that if aliens arrived every hundred million years, we would have been visited dozens of times by now. <laughs> no aliens. and No sale for me. No, no one has set foot anywhere near our solar system despite what you might have seen on the History Channel. <laughs> and we can't be the first civilization either, no. Over the last 13 billion years, more stars have formed in our local cosmic neighborhood, the Milky Way, than the total number of people who have ever existed on our planet. Even if just a millionth of 1% of those stars have had worlds around them at one point like ours, and could support a, a civilization like ours, that's still over a thousand alien species. And it only takes one to conquer the stars. So, this sh should have been easy money. But where is everybody? Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. That was wonderful. I really like your use of numbers. My head is spinning. <laughs> but this is an important topic, which Kate addressed in a very different way from a different angle. Uh, and I thank you for it. You know, actually, I'd like to hear you explain something, because I think it's an interesting concept that I never quite grasp when, I, when everybody talks about, well, where are the aliens? It's the idea that, well, they may be out there, but our timeline may not line up. That, you know, the, the, the well, how am I describing this? That, that the, Civilizations may be millions of years off. That's um, true, but if they're millions of years off, they would have time to, to show up here. Of course, then that raises the problem, like, you know, equivalently, what kind of conversation would we have with ants? You know, so that's one possible solution to this, but, I mean, ultimately, from the astrophysical side of things, which is what I study, um, the universe, ladies and gentlemen, wants to kill you. But luckily for us, it does a really terrible job at it. And it only lobs something terrible at us every 50 or a couple hundred million years or so. Things like asteroids, wayward comets, and the occasional gamma ray burst, stellar explosion that beams its radiation in our direction. So the idea here is that, you know, if everyone experiences these things, then we should all be about the same level. And that's one possible solution. So we could all be, all of our civilizations and our galaxy could all just be staring out the night sky being like, hello. Where is everybody, you know? So. so what is your favorite answer, then, to this, this question? 
I'll, I would say it's 75% um, of what I just said about all the universe trying to kill you and all that. And I would throw in a little dash of um, sustainability with that because, you know, it requires a lot of energy and I think on the order of a, a GNP to actually get the resources together to shove some people off into space. So, I mean, we like to just look at pictures of cats on the internet all day. Why doesn't, why wouldn't someone else, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs>